Hey guys, it's Gabby, and today we're going to be talking about the fungus that created the zombies in The Last of Us. While there are a multitude of theories and speculations on the game's characters and plot, let's focus on something a little bit more straightforward. The zombies. Particularly, what is actually happening to make them zombies? Aside from its incredible story and gameplay, what makes The Last of Us stand out among other zombie titles is the very real and very disturbing science behind the zombies in the game. The zombies in The Last of Us aren't just reanimated corpses that came back to life for whatever reason. They're fungi. Yes, fungi. Furthermore, a specific type of fungi that exists in our world and isn't just some harmless mushroom. Ophiocordyceps unilateris, hopefully I pronounced that right, is a parasitic fungus found primarily in tropical rainforest ecosystems. This tricky parasite has evolved a most unique way to maintain and spread its population by taking over the bodies of ants and essentially turning them into zombies, completely controlled by the fungus itself. David Hughes, associate professor of entomology and biology at Penn State, describes these infected ants as basically a fungus in ants' clothing, which is pretty damn accurate considering that the fungal cells can be found in the ants' thorax, legs, and abdomen. While the fungal cells don't actually enter the brain, they rely on manipulation of muscle fibers throughout the ant's body. Hughes likens this peripheral approach to a puppeteer pulling the strings on a marionette to make it move. Let's take a closer look at what's actually happening here. Essentially, the fungus works because it is greater than the sum of its parts. When the fungus first enters its host, it presents as individual cells within the ant's bloodstream. At some point, however, these cells begin to communicate with one another and form the 3D network mentioned earlier. These tubes are unique to parasitic fungal species and allow communication and nutrient exchange between individual cells. Together, the cells are able to create a superorganism capable of seizing control of its host. Once this unity has been established, the fungus can do its thing, aka kill literally any neurons associated with the brain's control of movement and take their place. At this point, the fungal cells release chemicals, which dictate the ant's muscle contractions from then on until the host inevitably dies. Okay, so why is the fungus actually doing this? What's the point of zombifying a bunch of ants? Simple, to spread. The ants give the fungus a really effective way of spreading its spores, and the fungus itself makes sure the ant acts exactly according to protocol. The fungus commands infected ants to climb almost exactly 25 centimeters, a height at which optimal temperature and humidity levels are present for growth. Once inside the designated growth zone, the ant is forced to lock its mandibles onto the stem, where it will stay until its tissue is completely replaced, eventually leading to its death. At this point, what's left of the ant is now completely covered in protruding fruiting stems of the fungus, which will burst and release their spores, only to start the cycle all over again. The Last of Us does a fantastic job applying this science to their game, with the infected humans acting as hosts for the fungus. The game's clickers, late-stage zombies who have become blind from the fungus overtaking their heads and faces, are a spot-on interpretation for late and end stages of infected ants, including the eventual spore proliferation upon the host's death. And while the real-life fungus doesn't seem to increase aggression in its hosts, it is plausible that the chemicals released during the infection could alter brain chemistry, resulting in the aggression and distress displayed by infected humans in the game. So thank you, zombie ants, for your sacrifice in helping to inspire one of the greatest and most moving games of the last decade. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like, a comment, any suggestions about future videos you'd like to see, and be on the lookout for our part two of The Last of Us, where we talk about Ellie's immunity. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you next time.